like a dark thought. The dredge is difficult to shake, and when night falls, it is nearly impossible. Welcome back, people of the fog, to another 7-minute guide. Today, we'll be diving in and covering everything that you'll need to know to best play and counter the dredge. I'm not going to waste your time with long intros, so if you're enjoying the content and you want to make me smile, maybe consider subscribing. Dredge's power has many layers to explain, so let me start with the basics. Reign of Darkness. And no, that's not the name of the next Metallica album. Reign of Darkness is the name of Dredge's power. When you press the activate power button, you will enter a dimension called the gloaming, and you travel at a slightly reduced speed. On top of that, the dredge will place a remnant at the exact same position you were facing when you started the power. While in the gloam, you can choose to aim at a locker and press the activate ability button to travel to the highlighted locker bundle. More on that later. During the daytime, you locker travel at a speed of 12 meters per second. Alternatively, while gloaming, you can press the attack button to return to your remnant. Keep in mind, teleporting to a locker, leaving the gloam, or a survivor touching your remnant will instantly destroy it. So how do I best place my remnant? Glad you asked. Let me give you a step-by-step -step example on how to best place your remnant. Take the pallet. If they can't chain their loop into another structure, they'll be stuck here. Remnant Deployment Ideally place the remnant a few steps from the pallet facing the way you want to be if you decide to reappear at it. Approach the survivor, forcing them the other way towards your placed remnant. Put them down. If they continue towards you, leave your power, and then bait the dead hard, then hit them. If they decide to run towards your remnant, wait until right before they touch it, and then if all is good, teleport to the remnant, then hit them after the dead hard. So that's how you properly utilize the remnant. Now I'm going to quickly explain what a formation I'm calling locker bundles are. Locker bundles are grouping of lockers, typically but not limited to, two to three lockers, depending on the map. The game will treat these locker bundles as if all individual lockers in the bundle were the same one. This is important because if you teleport to a locker from really far away, it's hard to be pinpoint accurate. So, if a survivor happens to be locking a locker in that locker bundle while you teleport there, the game will automatically target their specific locker and you'll interrupt grab that survivor. However, automatic targeting can be weaponized by survivors. Let me give you an example. This is a locker bundle. This is an ash. Groovy. If this smart ash clearly watch my seven minute guide, wanted to lock the entire bundle, he would simply only have to lock one in the entire bundle. The auto-targeting, unfortunately for the killer, will place the dredge in the locker with an active lock. Therefore, locking any more than one locker in the same bundle is a waste. This is because, if they are seen by the killer, they will likely be broken and thus leaving that entire locker bundle wasted and left as a point of attack. Now we will talk about one of Dredge's most powerful tools at their disposal, the passive ultimate ability called Nightfall. Once the Nightfall meter is full, that's here. Nightfall will begin automatic, forcing survivors to navigate in near total darkness. Nightfall, by default, ends after 60 seconds. Survivors destroying any remnants will also reduce this timer slightly. During Nightfall, the Dredge benefits from the following effects. Teleportations between lockers is faster, going at a crazy speed of 38 meters per second, with only a cooldown of 4 seconds. Fun fact! To put this in perspective, Deathslinger's harpoon travels at 40 meters per second. That's just 2 meters per second shy of matching a gun's projectile speed. Wow, that was indeed a fun fact. Survivors that are within 60 meters of the locker the dredge teleports to will also trigger Killer Instinct for 3 seconds. This effect will be your bread and butter for tracking and map control. Nightfall activates after hitting 300 daytime charges. This refers to how many charges must be accumulated before Nightfall starts. Things that'll give you charges. Hiding in lockers as the dredge awards you with plus 6 charges per second. Don't waste too much time charging your power this way because the killer's time is very limited in the match. 
The next thing that'll give you charges are the number of injured or dying survivors in the trial. Zero survivors injured is plus 2.5 charges per second. One injured survivor is plus one charge per second. Two is plus two, three is plus three, and four is plus four. Hitting a survivor with a basic attack grants you plus 20 charges. Hooking a survivor grants you plus 20 charges as well. Teleporting back to the remnant grants you plus 10 charges. You can use this outside of chase for free charges. Nightfall is when you can absolutely shatter a team by pressuring most of the map at once. Nightfall also makes it hard for survivors to navigate in the darkness and perform basic tasks. On top of this, it gives you info on the locations of survivors. Lastly, Nightfall by default ends after losing 60 Nightfall charge, which discharge at a rate of minus one charge per second. If you want more tips on how to better use Nightfall, check out my usually weekly streams here every Friday. We're running out of time here, so I'm gonna quickly cover this last few things. Malthinker Skull is an amazing yellow add-on, especially with Sloppy Butcher. Other good add-ons include the Field Recorder, the Lavalier Microphone, the Broken Doll, the Automarian Writings, and the Worry Stone. Any of these add-ons can be good, these are just my personal favorites. Dredge can't hide in lockers within 12 meters of hook survivors. If you remain in a locker for too long, a quiet eerie song will play and that locker will give off a faint smoke effect. Always stay mobile across the map and remember that you can teleport mid-chase if things aren't going your way. My current favorite build for Dredge is Sloppy Butcher, Save the Best for Last, Lethal Pursuer, and Deadlock. This is because Sloppy Butcher synergizes perfectly with Dredge. Save the Best for Last is very good in this endurance meta, Lethal Pursuer gives me the first chase instantly, and Deadlock is to give me that slight gen delay. Dredge is very much a killer that thrives with careful planning and your ability to think multiple moves ahead. If you find you're a fan of chess or strategy games, consider picking up the Dredge.